Welcome in to the DHNXT Back ah! Coast Show. Let's go! Suck it, Billy! Suck it, Philadelphia! Suck it, Pennsylvania! Suck it, Bryce Harper! Fuck your cheesesteaks! The whole whoa, state of whoa, Pennsylvania? Cheesesteaks. I won't stand for cheesesteaks. I'm okay with the cheesesteak, but the state of Pennsylvania. Oh, Otherwise. Yeah. Let's go, baby. The Arizona Diamondbacks are an absolute wagon, and they wow. somehow win this game in decisive fashion, of course, because we thought that they wouldn't. So here they are. But uh, believe in this team because we are going to a game seven in Philadelphia at Citizens Bank Park. And tonight, mm -hmm. this Diamondbacks team absolutely quieted that raucous crowd there in Philadelphia. Hats off to them. Good game. But we are going to a game seven and we will have big game Brandon on the mound for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And we will get into how we feel about that. But uh, we did not as Jason Schaff says right there, go across the country to get our asses beat. Tori? I, I think this team is just internally motivated. And, you know, I talked about an external motivation the other day. It seemed to catch a little wind. It wasn't really, I didn't mean for it to get that way. Um, but our team is extremely focused and centered on coming here and playing our best baseball game. And, you know, we can't look past game seven. As I've said, anything can happen in game seven. It's wide open, it's, it's a crapshoot, but getting there is really important. So we have that all in mentality. Um, we didn't come we didn't come cross country to get our ass kicked. We came here to play our best baseball game and our guys will be ready to go. Hell yeah, we didn't come across the country to get our ass kicked. We don't send Jesse across the country to watch you get your ass kicked. No. So let's fucking go. This team is dangerous. And Patrick, what was the most exciting thing for you tonight? Was it Merrill <sighs> Kelly's magnificent performance on the mound? Or was it this offense waking up tonight against a very tough starting pitcher in Aaron Nola, who still remained tough even after the Diamondbacks seemed to kind of beat up on him there for, for half an inning. And they the, the offense, you know, kind of did what they needed to do. Back-to-back -back home runs by yes. Tommy Pham and Lourdes Goriel Jr., two guys who were absolutely begging to see more out of. And then they did it once again. Lordy, lordy. Lordy, lordy. No, that, that's what it was. I mean, it was all about it. It's been this story, whether they're – at home or on the road, to quiet Philly's bats in the first yeah. inning to allow you a better chance at momentum. They had the opportunity there in the first inning, coming up first there as the road team in the top of the first, but couldn't get anything across there, uh, even with Moreno's two-out single. But yes, Tommy Pham off the bat, it was obvious, and you go, of course, because he's the least likely guy to do it after basically being benched for Game 5, back in the starting lineup, hitting fifth, and then immediately thereafter, Lourdes Gurriel, follow suit to give them the 2-0 lead, and they yep. simply would not look back from that. And they got another run even after that yeah. with Alec Thomas walking, uh, which he did a couple times tonight, being very patient. And then Evan Longoria with an RBI double. 15 years to the day of when he had an RBI against this exact same Philadelphia Phillies franchise in the, playoff, playoffs. In the World Series, yes, for the Tampa for Bay Rays. an expansion team years. that made their debut in 1998. That's it. Right? The more things change, the more they stay the same. <laughs> we did not think there was any way, any chance in heck that they had any chance winning this game at Citizens Bank Park in a place where the Phillies were 28 and 11. Yeah. They got the win. Yeah. yeah. They won. And and again. For the first time at Citizens Bank let's Park. Let's fucking go. First time I need a to team put money in, in the game. National League had beaten the Phillies at Citizens Bank Park since mm. 2011. St. Louis Cardinals. That's how long ago it had been. That's a long time. That is over a decade, folks. Yeah, there's a pandemic wow. that happened in between there, a couple <laughs> of Call of Duty games. Um, yes, that is an incredible feat, but <laughs> Merrill Kelly deserves all of the credit tonight for what he did. The five innings he pitched, he gave up one earned run, was magnificent, absolutely did not look solid 
in the first inning, right? I mean, walked a couple of guys, walked Schwarber to lead things off, walked Bryce Harper. We thought it was an interesting strategy. That was probably the way to go. Make other guys beat you. Definitely not the ones that have been beating you so far. But Trey Turner has been beating everybody lately. They didn't seem to have a problem facing him and getting him out. But uh, Merrill Kelly, once again, pulled off one of those starts where he mm -hmm. seemed to get stronger mm -hmm. as the outing went on. He gave up that one run in the second inning, and that was it. And not only was that it for Merrill Kelly, that was it for the team. This yeah. bullpen continues to be incredible when called upon in these high leverage situations and specifically the four guys that they use tonight. They're not even guys. They're dudes. They were guys and now they're dudes because they're four dudes and those four dudes have gotten it done for this team not only to get them to this point to make it to the postseason in the postseason and now tonight they were absolutely crucial in well, keeping that crazy Phillies lineup off the scoreboard. Bullpen, yeah, bullpen was huge there for the final four innings. Kelly going uh, five innings even, only gave up three hits, gave up the one run, walked one, struck out eight. And as you said, in that first inning, it really seemed like that was the game plan was to just basically walk Schwarber, walk Harper, hope that they chase something outside of the zone or just put something in, in, in play weak and on the ground. But he walked two. The broadcast said that was the first time all year that he had walked two in an inning. Maybe it was just two in the first that, inning. Either way. That alone is either impressive. Way. That is impressive, yeah. right? And he get he gets out of that and and just looks really great. Only only gives up the one run. It seemed like that could have been an opportunity for the Phillies to get more. Even just the one would have been enough, I think, to to give the Phillies enough hope to say, okay, we can attack this guy. Even yep. that one was probably more than you would have liked to have seen. But they get the one uh, off Real, Real Muto's leadoff double, RBI single for Marsh. And that was all they got for the rest of the game. Let's go. Because Cog said the thing that we were trying to warn you about this whole time. <laughs> it wasn't a real, like, it, it, it wasn't us talking shit. We were really trying to tell you, don't let us get three. God forbid. God forbid you let us get three. Because we're going to get four. And that's the way that this works. That's the last thing you want. That's the last thing you want to see to is for us to get four. Oh, my God. Do not let us get four. Let's take a look through some of these uh, because we exp we want to just thank all of you guys so much for being here. Uh, ch shout out to our guy, CWP. He says, Mac, bring in the fire early on. She absolutely does. Uh, she owes at least $20 to the swear jar. I know that <laughs> much. Uh, M2 to the world. Uh, or I'm to the world says, uh, showing my respects. We will win game seven, uh, respect. Good game. I appreciate you being here. Uh, some of the Phillies fans, we know the Dodgers fans all disappeared afterwards and this is nothing. We still have a huge game in the, and don't get me wrong. The Phillies absolutely have the advantage in game seven there at home, but, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna have a battle tomorrow night. Uh, and he said, if I can talk, I can say, well done. One left hashtag fills. Uh, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow night, sir. Libertarian Sasquatch says, uh, over under on four broken bats from Carol next game. Uh, we're taking that over. We're smashing that over on that one. Thank you for your super chat, but here's our guy flex from Jersey. Uh, by the way, flex, uh, again, for those of you that don't know, has been adding $5 onto a super chat ever since the start of the Arizona diamondbacks magical run here in the postseason. And we're up to $40, baby. Let's go wow. flex scared money. Don't make money. He said, let's go fellas snakes in seven. Why not us? Damon, why not us? I can't think of one good reason. I ask that question every single day. Why not us? I wake up, I look in the mirror in my bathroom, and I say, I don't see any good reason why it can't let's be say, us. Well, let, let's go to Patrick. Patrick, um, you are impartial here. Yeah. Um, why not us? I, I don't know. Yeah. Why not? Why not us? I don't know. All right, Benjamin I'll tell, I'll tell you what, though. If, if, if the Diamondbacks can win in Game 7, just looking at it specifically from the PHNX Sports, PHNX Diamondbacks, kind of perspective, sure. that $45 from Flex might even be able oh. to allow Jesse to not have to sit in the middle seat oh. on his next flight. What? Like, it's big time. No. That's how big no. time this is. He's flying Frontier, and he's not taking any bags with him anywhere he goes, especially <laughs> to the World Series, if that's the case. He's but glad to be on, on board. Big, big gap. Big gap to get there. Still a big battle to win. And, of course, the Phillies were up, so they had this advantage. But, man, it would have been sweet. Would have been sweet. It would have been sweet if they would have been able to snag that game five at home. Benjamin Hundley says, 
this was predictable. The two, 2023 D-backs make everyone give up and then win when all hope is lost. You should have seen it coming. Yeah, I mean, they, they can't keep getting away with this, right? They can't keep getting away with it. Uh, Travis said, never back down. Never what? Never surrender, Travis. We never surrender. And also, no mercy. Uh, Albert says, didn't see a moment of this game. All I know is the D-backs are a fucking wagon. This one's for you. Appreciate you, Al. You're the man. Uh, anyway, this team, again, did it based on their pitching uh, and the offense showing up. I mean, they they did all of the things that they uh, did not do well in game five. I know there's a lot of questions yeah. about Zach Gallen and Merrill Kelly, and I've even seen people trying to, you know, now, now shuffle the tier and be like, well, Merrill Kelly's the number one and whatnot now. No, this is – no. No, this is not about that. Uh, Zach Gallen has had some poor performances, but we don't we don't care about that at this point because the Diamondbacks again still need Zach Gallen, and going forward, I think he can still be excellent for this team. Um, but Merrill Kelly tonight, he was excellent for this team when they needed him the most, and the offense showed up when they needed the needed it to, the most. Uh, they got power out of those back to back home runs. They were stealing bases. They were making stuff four? happen on was the there base. Four run. There were, I believe, four stolen bases, if my math is correctly. But let me double check that uh, just to check stolen bases. We had Christian Walker, had Walker Perdomo, the, only the Marte, uh, and then Alec Thomas. So yeah, we had four. That's wild. Yeah, came came into this game in game six with only one stolen base was Lourdes Gurriel. And then you got Christian Walker with the second one. You go, all right. And, and then Marte with one. Uh, okay. I I found it to be really great. Um, this would have been an interesting talking point had the Diamondbacks lost. But again, it seems like whenever Tory pushes certain buttons, certain but buttons are larger than others. Certain buttons flash red a little bit brighter than others. But the button he pushed with Merrill Kelly saying, hey, thanks for your service. Five innings, you looked really great, but we're going to the bullpen at that point. Merrill Kelly was not very happy with him, with Tori Lovello at that point. He was a little bit frustrated. You could see it in Kelly's face, but look, if you get a win, that's really the only thing that matters. That's all that matters. And this beer bat. Next this, to a beer bat. This beer bat What's really matters. What's happened to this to show, man? <laughs> that's why if you're listening to the podcast, hey, great, but hey, you're missing out on a lot of You're missing stuff. out on Derek with a snake wrapped around his neck and a bat full of beer that he's drinking out of. He I looks like a pimp. I am out of it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, chugging out of it is the is the word that I was going it's to go very with more. Heavy. It's um, very yeah, heavy. Yeah, that, I'm waiting for that to die down a little bit. Maybe in segment two we'll get that chugged. But <laughs> in the meantime, uh, again, uh, you can't say enough about the team effort. It was a complete F team effort once again. I mean, this the, this team kind of lives and dies together. They okay. don't. What do you want? I'm, I'm just, oh, yeah, getting the D-back. Yeah, people gotta, need to know. People need to know. It. Yeah. It's a D-backs branded right. uh, beer bat. Carroll won for four. Cattell Marte mm -hmm. extends his hitting streak wow. to an impressive 15 games, tying Trent Grisham. For the longest career, or longest, uh, is that right? Close. Marquise Grissom. Marquise Grissom. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Marquise Grissom. Uh, Marquise Grissom for uh, the longest. Career. Yeah, yeah. yeah to, to start a career. He's got two more to go uh, to tie Manny Ramirez's uh, record of, of 17 of just any consecutive games. Actually, Derek Jeter did that, and Hank Bauer, uh, a great from the uh, New York Yankees back in the day in the 50s. But, yeah, I mean, Marte just seemed like – he was, I think we talked about him pregame. Like he's been probably the best this postseason just for his consistency. And, and Gabby Moreno right after that, uh, we, we saw him do it at the plate, got that, got that hit there in the first. And then also throw out Kyle Schwarber on, I, I guess technically it's a stolen base attempt because if that ball, if he had gotten to, to second Schwarber, that would have just been a, a wild pitch. Like that's how mm -hmm. he advances. But Moreno pounces on that ball so quickly, gets it down to second base. There's a tag. Phillies try to review it. Uh, but it is upheld, and you know you you've got a nice out there where you could have had a runner in scoring position. Philly's got a little bit of momentum, but no, Gabby Moreno snuffs that out yes. right away. Yeah, don't run on Gabby. No, don't run on Gabby. And it was really close too. Uh, there was a lot of talk about the Kyle Schwarber trying to take that bag, and yeah. I mean, honestly, it, it it required a perfect throw just about in order to get him. So this was not by any stretch of the imagination a, a terrible idea on his part, but the Phillies were trying to get something started, and it felt like the Diamondbacks had a really good game plan against them uh, tonight, for sure. It was, it was great. Yeah, they they executed as they were supposed to. Again, Torrey said they are going to be aggressive. Walker with that first stolen base, that was a, a, a lot of aggression. And what's, what's really wild, too, and I didn't say this pregame because I don't want to, you know, dampen uh, on the parade, rain on the parade, if you will, and, and, and dampen the spirits a little bit. But in elimination games, which this was for Arizona, Arizona was six and five all time in potential elimination games, and zero oh and four in such games 
when they were on the road. Oh, and four. <sighs> this is the first ever elimination one, road win one for the Diamondbacks. And the, Phillies, and the Phillies, 15 and four in the postseason and potential clinch games and games in which they were home, nine and two. Games in which they were at Citizens Bank Park, six and one. And yet they played the game and the Diamondbacks were the victors. You held this information from me, didn't you? You knew I would be a nervous wreck if you told me this stuff before the show. I know you. Yeah, I know no, you. I mean, There's a, a good, lot of people that uh, are your better halves. Oh, man. I am one of them. Yeah, we've been spending a lot of time together. Me and Damon are going to get a fist fight <laughs> if this thing goes to the <laughs> world They're 100% going to get a fist fight. 100%. We got some more Super Chats. Let's go to those really fast, if you don't mind, sir, uh, because I want to thank all of you guys for that. Uh, Thomas, he said, for fuck's sake, not four. Swear jar. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, Travis said, 20 years, 20 plus years of pain as a D-backs fan ends tomorrow. Let's end this. Let's go, Travis. I'm with you. Uh, Kevin Haskey says, don't let us get three. We'll get four. God forbid you can let us get three. You did it. You, that was a mistake. What uh, the hell were they thinking? Yeah. Uh, Thomas, once again, gave more $5 more. He said, hit the fucking like. And now he's right. Gabby's going to tell you to do that, too, here in a moment. But maybe not with the F-bomb. Joe says, uh, Fat Tuesday going to be a party. It is Fat Tuesday. Uh, and he said, call in the sick work. Uh, call in sick to work on Wednesday. Great advice. It's you true. guys need to start planning uh, ahead for some you of this text, stuff. You text your boss today just to say, like, hey, my throat's feeling a little bit sore. And you plant that seed. Also, as everyone knows, Wednesday is the new Thursday, which is the new Friday. So basically, just go out, celebrate Game 7, get a little bit crazy, whether need, you have a beer bat or not. I need another beer. Have some fun and enjoy Fog, it. Because, give me another beer. Because your team, your 84-win Arizona Diamondbacks, Surprise me, I don't care. are one win away Diamondbacks just won. from only their second World Series in franchise history. I'll drink any beer right now. Wow. Also, Damon, could you cut the audio up so it's just me talking about Game 7? <laughs> Let's go. It's a rattle on red ale. We got the producer, Posh, bringing it to me by hand. Thank you, sir. And just uh, Derek talking about got, the beer. We got business to finish tomorrow. We got some business to finish tomorrow. Let's go, Faj. All right. Jagertha wagons just hit different, don't they? Jagertha. Oh, Jagertha. Jagertha is Algeria's favorite son and the number one Arizona Diamondback in that area of, of the world. I didn't know if you guys knew that or not. I might give Jagertha a king snake one of these days, but... Until we do, we got to give our king snake to somebody. And that person, of course, is Hoodie Merrill. Hoods up for Merrill <laughs> Kelly. Five innings pitch, three hits, one earned run, eight strikeouts. Uh, just magnificent. A magnificent night on the mound for Merrill Kelly. Couldn't ask for more from this guy tonight. I know Merrill could have asked for more because one thing we haven't discussed yet is Merrill getting a little heated about Tori Lavello yeah. pulling him from this game. And here's the thing, folks. You don't you don't just pull Merrill from you don't pull Hoodie Merrill from the game without Hoodie Merrill approving being pulled from the game. That's kind of the way things work. Uh, did you see the clip specifically, or just on the broadcast when it happened? I saw on the broadcast. I saw some still frames of just that look on his face, and Tori was just like, "I got to give you the news," and then he just he, he just walked to, away he, from the he, situation. He like went to shake his hand, and Merrill's reaction was almost like, You're kidding "The me. fuck are you doing with that hand? Why You're are you? Me. What is the hand for, Tori?" Why are you handing me your hand? <laughs> like, it was legitimately like, no, absolutely not. If you don't have the bullpen that the Diamondbacks do, you could understand that. And I, again, Merrill's back yeah. home. He's like, man, I really want to go out there and yeah. have an all-time performance. I'm not yep. going to be able to, like, top Brandon mm. Fott and what he was able to do, what but at least I can now? kind of match him just a little bit because my six-inning performance will be on the road at CBP. Uh, alas, it's only going to be five minutes. And and the other piece that I liked, I didn't see any images of it other than from the game, but late in that ninth inning, showing Brandon Fott standing along the railing with this look on his face of like, we're really going to do Brandon? this. Big yeah. game, Brandon. We're really going to do this? Yeah, Brandon Fott. Y'all really are going to do this. Mm -hmm. You're going to do this. Yeah, big game, game Brandon. Game seven. Big game, Brandon. 25-year-old rookie <laughs> on ready. the bump. Man, and, wow. and we obviously have more to talk about when it comes to that. But uh, we want to thank all of you guys for being here right now on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. Whether you have your hoods up or you're just here to give us a hearty ski -y. A hearty ski -y to you and a hearty ski -y to you over there, sir. Uh, and especially to Cogs for uh, bringing me this beer bat and his mom, Karen, uh, for drinking and consuming enough alcohol 
uh, for this beer bath to be empty, uh, for it to leave the stadium. So I thank you both. Uh, but you guys, of course, are the best, and we thank you guys for being here. Uh, if you are have never been here before, make sure to subscribe to the PHN Exports YouTube channel. Sign up for notifications. That way you don't miss when any of our wonderful shows go live. Leave us a little thumbs up just to let us know that you like us and you appreciate the show. Uh, and on the audio podcasting side, we always can use some five-star reviews, so make sure to drop us one of those, and make sure you subscribe there as well. We are the we, we are a top 20 baseball podcast in the United States. States, believe it or not this guy with this mustache and this guy with his takes and his refusal to curse uh it's it's incredible to me that what we've accomplished here but Shucks, yeah uh we are a dangerous team the two of us we're very connected but of course uh the diamondbacks they're a connected team and they're a fucking dangerous team so make sure to get the shirt of a fucking dangerous team over at the phnxlocker.com you can get that shirt right now of course if you are a diehard you get 20 percent off that shirt purchase when you do if you're not a diehard maybe consider signing up for that because now would be a great gotta, time to do that my phone is blowing up and i did gotta not get put signed up because of the benefits the best the best part of the benefits again i i've said this a million times over is yes. the diehards only discord because like all really of the is. love and the action that's going on right now in the chat for everyone that's over on the d uh the phnx sports channel on youtube like that just happens all day long yeah. on discord it's like yeah. the exact same thing you're right we get to hang out with your friends right. and, and like, share the vibes. Anytime I go into the Discord, it's popping. Uh, and and you guys make that happen, by the way. So a big thank you to all of our diehard members because you guys are the ones that make this chat uh, popping. And you guys are the ones that also uh, make that Discord so much fun. Also, you'll get Jesse's newsletter or his uh, monthly mailbag that you won't get otherwise. All of our uh, content that's locked behind a paywall, which isn't much because mostly – we just want you to join the family uh, to get all these wonderful benefits that we have to offer, including discounts with our partners uh, and so much more. So sign up today uh, to become a diehard. Uh, and also uh, get yourself some wonderful Four Peaks, which I am drinking Ooh. right now out of this bat. Uh, I am, in fact, drinking the Rattle on Red Ale, which is the official craft beer of your Arizona Diamondbacks, which, by the way, I don't know if you've heard, are heading to a Game 7 of the National League Championship Series against the Philadelphia Phillies with a potential one game, one game, one game away from the World Series. So make sure to grab the official craft beer of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Perfect at Gale tailgates around the valley for 25 years and of course they have their pumpkin porter season available right now you can get in a fall state of mind with notes of nutmeg allspice and toasted pie crust so make sure oh. you not miss out on that delicious beer visit wow. fourpeaks.com slash locator to find all of your favorite brewery tours and events stein holding oktoberfest and haunted brewery tours are all right here right now so check out at four peaks brewer or at four peaks pub to keep up with the latest at arizona's hometown brewery must be 21 or older to drink four peaks and please drink responsibly and i know some of you might be like my friend Patrick over here. Maybe you don't enjoy beers as much, but hey, they have a wide variety of delicious food, and we have talked at length about uh, the chicken tendies, so do not miss out on the delicious chicken tendies. And if Sean were still here, he'd say that the French onion soup is amazing and that the uh, pumpkin porter cheesecake is delectable. It, it, that very much is a thing nowadays is that breweries are like, well, look, we want everyone to come, even with their families. We can't just have the beer. We, we need really good food too so four peaks definitely follows in that tradition and in a major major way by the way game seven game seven folks game seven the two we are one words away. in sports do you want game seven do you want to give them a little bit of you got you got some more notes while i chug this next beer that you i'm going to cheer it's a victory beer so i got I mean, i've seen you chug so it's going to be like you know seconds long of, of stats all right dating back to august 10th again talking about the improbability of this win for the diamondbacks since august 10 the phillies Eight and zero oh in Aaron Nola's eight starts at Citizens Bank Park. Shut Five and zero in the regular you, season. You, you didn't get it out in time. Nope. Sorry. Three and zero nice in the postseason. Though. Nice try. Wheeler during <sighs> this stretch of games again, where the Phillies are eight and zero oh at Citizens Bank Park with Nola on the bump. Wheeler is 5-0 and with a 1.85 ERA, fanning 53 batters and 48 and two-thirds innings pitch. He went four and a third, only struck out four, so that's worse than that average. So again. The deck was stacked against the Diamondbacks, but they pulled an ace out of their sleeve. They basically said, you want to play 21? I got 22. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chris Mountain's <laughs> trying to commit me to just the longest day of my entire life by having me do a watch along tomorrow. We'll see. Maybe. I don't know. But what we do have for you to watch right now is some videos from the clubhouse, including our very own baby boy, Corbin Carroll, on Merrill Kelly and the amazing night he had on the bump for the Diamondbacks. Very impressed. Uh, if 
thought I thought it threw the ball, ball versus them pretty well last time, and I thought just uh, you know had, had the change of working tonight, had um, you know just had, had his stuff, and so uh, you know that was he, he gave everything out there. It was awesome. He really did, and I mean he even wanted to give more. And to be honest, I mean we could. Yeah. I, I think that's a debatable point. Merrill Kelly was at ninety. Uh, I, our very own Fodge and I were watching the game for a bit in his office, and. I, I thought it was going to be a wrap for him. And uh, Jacob was basically saying, this is the offs. This is this this is the time of the year where, where you take off those 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 pitch counts, where you take off those hundred. But that's not why. But that's not why. But it's not. It, that's not why. It's, it's, it's the it's offs. The, it's, hey, you're lucky you even went five innings because every game was almost becomes a bullpen game, right, at that yeah. point. And it's I think it's also more about, Hey Kelly, go out there. Maybe you can get one or two more outs. Well, what if you can't get one or two more outs? And now there's a guy on base. Now you're bringing in a reliever. Now you're bringing in Thompson or Saul Frank with a guy on base, not setting them up for that success. So yeah. it's it's it is a weird thing that like we're getting back to the same behavior of like early to mid April of like, hey, this guy's shoving. Leave him out there. He's got something special. Hey, there's a lot more baseball to play. There's not a lot more baseball to play, and yet you almost have to manage with that kind of um, you know uh, governor on your pitchers of like. Hey, you, we can't get you out too far. Not because of the how it's going to tax you, but because if you get into trouble, yeah. that trouble is is multiplied three or fourfold. So you know what? We're going to pull you, hold you back now and give it to the pen, especially when you got a pen that good. The Phillies don't That's have it. a pen that good. That's it. They don't. They don't benefit from that same thing. It's like, oh, you see Craig Kimbrell in there, and you go, oh, okay, this could get really interesting, and it almost did. It yeah. almost did there in the eighth. Yeah, but the Diamondbacks don't have to worry about that. They've got guys who can shove, and so now when you hand the ball over to the bullpen, Merrill, you know, you, when the twenty seventh out is made, you're gonna have a W next to your name, and that's that's a good feeling at the end of the day too. I think if if I'm being honest, I think it's a matter of giving a different look to a lineup like this, right? Yes. And it's what has made yes. Tory so successful so far in the playoffs is he hasn't really let anybody go very far. Obviously, with how Brandon fought pitched uh, in in what was that game three that he pitched in, right? Yeah. That they, you know, there was a lot of people angry with him that he only let fought pitch, I think five and two thirds. And honestly, it was because he had a set number of batters that fought was going to face. And that set number was two times through the rotation. Exactly right? that. And yep. they wanted to make sure that this, this team, this lineup didn't see him a third time, especially when you have somebody like Ryan Thompson that can come out after Merrill Kelly leaves the game. And Ryan Thompson is just, he just comes at you with a completely different arm angle. You've been watching Merrill Kelly all night. You've been sharing information amongst your teammates. And now this guy comes out with this really funky arm angle that seems to be effective, but he's not trying to strike you out. He goes out there and just pitches to contact and gets you, gets out. And then you see a completely different look in Andrew Saul Frank, and you see a different look in Kevin Ginkle, and you see a different look in, in Paul Seawald and all mm -hmm. of these guys are extremely good relief pitchers, and, and a lot of them could probably give you more innings than just one. But this formula has worked well because it limits the amount of information that can be shared within the dugout between the hitters on what their tendencies are. Even if someone's tipping their pitches or something of the sort, they're not really out there long enough for that information to get shared and, and you know grow. And the Diamondbacks right now have those four guys, the four guys that were in tonight's game, are the guys that they count on, that they know that can go out there and get the job done. And, you know, again, uh, Saul Franks had a couple of bad outings in the playoffs, but for the most part during the regular season, his entire debut and the entire time he pitched for this team was pretty incredible. It was that was pretty incredible. huge for him to be in that spot because personally, really was. I was leaning towards Mantiply and you say, ah, I think maybe the Phillies have Saul Frank figured out just a little bit. Again, it was such a small sample size. But it pitched great. I hadn't give up a a run. Had not literally not given up a run as a big leaguer until this series, and then it happened again to him essentially. And so, yeah, maybe you want to go to Mantiply, who looked solid, uh, obviously in that bullpen game in Game Four. But you go back to Saul Frank, and now if you feel confident with he's like back in the mix, like Tori pushed that button and had confidence in Saul Frank. Some fans might not have, but now I think fans are back on that bus of like, okay, Saul Frank is now a dude that you can rely on in a really big way. And 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 to your point about, you know, three times through 
the lineup, like it's about the looks. It's about seeing a guy and making adjustments and knowing, hey, I, I know what this looks like and I can I can do really well against it. Merrill Kelly, first time through the order, hitters are batting under 200 against him during the regular season, 611 OPS. That goes up 39 points the second time, 222 batting average and 650 OPS. And then it shoots up a whopping 128 points on OPS. Wow. 247 batting average and a 778 OPS third time through the order. You cannot afford to be putting guys on base or giving up extra base hits, which is what happens the third time through the order, even to the best of them and guys like a Merrill Kelly. So you understand why Tory's doing that because you're, you're almost playing with fire for no reason when you have a bullpen full of fire. And if you, Hey, you know how you beat fire? You play it with fire, right? You fight fire with fire? You fight fire with fire? That's what the whole saying goes, right? That's you right. fight fire with fire? And the Diamondbacks have a bunch of firemen in the bullpen, which they put out fires, but they do it with fire. I think that comment is fire. I think that's one too many fires, but it, I would need is. to review the tape. We need a fire jar. And I'm, if I just repeat fire too yeah, many, I have to that We can add that. I'm pretty sure I never even introduced us. Uh, at the beginning of the show. We're going to get the show started now, and we've got another hour It's 30 left minutes too. into the show, and I just wanted to remind you guys, my name is Derek Montia, <laughs> occasionally known as your mayor of the postseason. This is my hot tag partner, uh, and I mean that in more ways than one, the one and only Patrick D. Lyons. It's hoodie season. Hoodie Merrill was incredible. Someone asked who the MVP was. It was Hoodie Merrill. Hoodie Merrill was the MVP. But you could also give it to the bullpen, to be honest, because uh, the pitching in this game was phenomenal. Holding this potent Phillies offense once again to one run, uh, and this is the second game in the series that they've been able to do that. Uh, we have Corbin Carroll here in the clubhouse talking about uh, going to game seven. It's hard to put into words, but I think everyone's just excited. To, you know, it's going to be hard to sleep tonight. Uh, just, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow's it. It's, it's win or go home, and um, I think everyone's obviously incredibly excited for that. We're all excited for that, Corbin. Let's fucking go. It's the Yoffs. We get another game in the Yoffs. This is incredible. I can't say enough. Like I said, I was almost preparing people to lose tonight, but you got to continue to hold your head high for what this team has not only done in the playoffs so far, but what they continue to do in the motherfucking Yoffs. They are a wagon, and they continue to roll. Uh, and Christian Walker has more uh, from the locker room uh, on the vibes. On the vibes. We need to know about the vibes after the win. Yeah, exciting. Um, you know, it's it's nice when you hold yourself to a standard and an expectation, and you go out and, and you, you execute it. And um, you know, things like that, I think, make it easy to buy into yourself as as a team, as an individual. Um, the whole thing, it's, it's it's confidence building. I got another beer. Go yeah, ahead. They, do your thing. It, it was it was impressive. You know, one one of the <laughs> other things too that uh that we'll we'll get to uh right now and i'll take my time uh yeah, you might as well Derek I mean, first fills up the beer bag before chugging not, it look not. we we talked in the pregame and, and this is one of the reasons why go back and watch that show on the phn export channel on youtube or, or or listen to that podcast just to see either how well our predictions were came true or how well you know things went the opposite of how we were thinking but uh our, our fingers is, is on that pulse either way um, it, that's just why they play the game. Is, is it going to happen or is it not going to happen? And we said, put the ball in play, let the Phillies kind of make some some mistakes. And that happens with Perdomo there late in the game uh, against Soto. I want to say it was the ninth where he lays down a bunt and then it gets thrown away. You go, yeah, Bryce Harper does not play first base very well. So something could happen. And then you saw Corbin Carroll do it too. Uh, and a sacrifice bunt that advanced Perdomo to third base. They're not able to get anything done with one out and Perdomo on third base in the ninth would have been a nice... Uh, insurance run there, but you, you see the Phillies making that error, forcing their hand by putting the ball in play. And so would have been nice to get one extra run. But that being said, they didn't need it in the ninth because St. Seawald, the Saint savior, Seawald. Pope the, Paul the ninth, Pope Paul the ninth, the, the uh, patron saint of high leverage innings came in. We jumped around, ascended to a higher place and the Diamondbacks won the game. And again, nothing. Now you can't say enough. You cannot say enough about Kevin Ginkle and Paul Seawald at the end of a game. Like, these guys are incredible. And, I mean, what is this? Jesse has an article that I guarantee you can find very easily by going to gophnx.com and looking it up. But he has an article where he talks about how this team historically, historically has been bad. Historically has been bad. 
historically uh, when it comes to the bullpen. There is, uh, yeah. even even in good years, their bullpen was still bad. Their goal, bullpen was still inconsistent, right? And now here we have these four guys that absolutely fire me up because of how consistently they've been getting the job done. Ryan Thompson, by the way, yep. spoke the other day and talked about how his pitching style, his entire delivery is based on the fact he was a young, young Kim fan when he was a child. This is fate. This is fate. This is absolute fate. It's absurd. And yeah, Paul Seawald, incredible. Byun, Absolutely incredible. So you're saying Byung, Byung, Young, Gimkle? Young, Kim. Gimkle. Gimkle. Byung, no. Young, Gimkle. Say that one time Gimkle? fast. Gimkle? Uh, Gimkle, yeah. Instead like of Kim. Mariana Gimkle. Really? What was Ryan Thompson? You're right. So Thompson gets one, <laughs> one and a third. It just Are you drinking? Which one of us is drinking the fucking Look, beer? I'm bats melting here, with this hood. I, I got to take the hood off here oh, for just a hot. second. Yeah, no, it's getting hot. I, the word, the word play sometimes it gets the best of me. Yes, Ryan Thompson. He gets four outs tonight. Does give up two hits, but he's solid. The entire bullpen. We, we, we said it pregame. Like these guys are going to be able to come back tomorrow. Yeah. Especially since none of them pitched on Saturday. They had the day off on Sunday. But Thompson. Four outs through 15 pitches. Saul Frank got himself an out on six. Ginkle, 13. And Seawald in his best performance uh, of this division series or this championship series, excuse me, uh, is able to do it on 11 pitches. Two strikeouts, including the game ender with uh, Brandon Marsh there going down on strikes. And he he didn't even seem to be that stoked about it, Like, which is probably good because it's like, I'm going to save my energy. We should have won this game. We did win this game. I closed it out. We won five one. We got to come back tomorrow. So I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go bonkers just yet. I'll yeah, save that. I agree. for when we win at uh, at Citizens Bank Park. That's him talking. That's him talking. That's fine. I I, I still thought I got a wee out of you when it came to that. I know no, you're no, no. too professional for that. I am. But I'm gonna get you to slip, just like the s word you said the other night. But <laughs> Ryan Sheesh. Ryan with the super chat says, "Fuck it, walk them all." <laughs> R D <laughs> is a fuck motherfucking wagon. That's right. Uh, uh, my guy Mark Solera, aka Don's Bread, says, "Who likes cheese steaks anyways?" I I, I chicken cheese steaks. I like cheese steaks. I we don't have to bring food into this. I don't understand <laughs> why I have to give up eating cheese steaks. Caesar says shouldn't have let us into the playoffs. Period. He's not wrong. You guys made a mistake when you let us in. And God forbid they should never gave us, us money. Four. Huh? N imagine if they let us get four. If they get let us get four, that's just ridiculous. Then huge mistakes were made. Balls were dropped. Sith Kelly is waiting. Sith Kelly is extra dangerous. Let's go. Uh, our comrade BM says, first game seven in my life. Wow. Let's fucking go. Uh, Travis comrade. said, who gets their gonzo moment in game seven? I want to say Jerry P. Jerry Perdomo oh, feels like a big, he's got, like a big Gonzo moment kind of guy. He's got all over yeah. him. Oh, he absolutely Geraldo Perdomo does. is that dude. Yeah, Jerry P for sure. Yeah, I think for so. For sure. But he also uh, barrels it and it still like bloops over the yeah. second piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, wait, how do you do that? He's Jerry P. That's how. <laughs> that's how. Brett Johnson, of course, he's screaming from his house right now at the Diamondbacks in Philadelphia. It says, Ginky got real kinky and threw that stinky. Let's go. That's our guy, Ginkle. Uh, AZ Katz G said, watch boxing trainer Teddy Atlas. We are fireman video. We live in the heat. We train in the heat. Pumps me up every time. Let's go. We are the firemen. Uh, and Joe says, if we win tomorrow, everyone needs to troll Mad Dog Russo into retirement. Oh, Joe is exactly right. God. Joe, we got that clip. So we clipped that clip. We got that clip and we are saving that clip for a freezing cold take. And we will make sure that man quits. Uh, well, we, I you, will you, not. I will not rest a single day in my life until that man retires. If the Arizona Diamondbacks, God forbid, get Game Four. Do you want to? Do you want to explain what it is? Because you might not get a chance to play it. Oh yeah, but, that's right. My, Mad Dog Russo basically proclaimed on his show, yes. telling I believe his producer to write it down that he will in <laughs> fact retire should the Arizona Diamondbacks win two games in Philadelphia wow. and advance to the World Series. If I was <laughs> Tori Lavolo, that video, that clip would be playing on repeat in the clubhouse until every single player 
left for the night. The opportunity not only to advance to the World Series, but to absolutely make one of the biggest blowhards in baseball, eat his words, and retire potentially? Let's go! Get that gas bag out of here! And we know Tory saves receipts, and frankly... I think they might have ran out of receipts after his comment oh, today oh. of like we didn't fly across country get our ass kicked, which was the talk. CBS and so you know what? Size receipts. But you know what? This this is the this is the game seven receipt, Mad Dog. Tori Lavallo is like one of those congratulations people. on your retirement. He's like one of those people that doesn't understand taxes. So when he opens up this box he's been keeping all year, he has every receipt from the entire year, all of them. You're like, why did you keep this $5 candy receipt? He said, I thought it could be tax deductible. <laughs> anyway, we got Gallon, of course, uh, on believing this team would be here. Gallon knew we'd be here. Uh, maybe we didn't, but we, but Gallon knew. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I, like, you know, I, I, I heard Longo talking about it. And I heard some, I, I think we were, you know, so young. It's like you have this crazy album that's on, but I mean, why else do you suit up in February? What's the point? I mean, if you're not, you're not playing to, to play in November, Yes, let's go. Uh, love it so much. Cog says we're retiring. Kimbrel, Kershaw, and Mad Dog. Let's go. Check, check, That's a check. Good comment. Uh, it's fantastic. Uh, and uh, speaking of Jerry P, here he is on being one win away from the World Series. I feel amazing. I feel amazing. I, I can't wait for the boys tomorrow. Uh, be aggressive in the game. It's, it's not Wednesday, only tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> the excitement in the club. There is no Wednesday. There is no Wednesday. There's only tomorrow. Live life like Jerry P. Oh my God. In Let's fucking go. Geraldo Perdomo, even I just I, I definitely have to say I have a have a major appreciation for Geraldo Perdomo Please after go. watching I'll, I'll, tr I'll chug while you talk this about this entire Jerry. postseason, you know, with some clutch hits and good performance, even when he doesn't contribute. He's not looking totally outclassed and overmatched. He's doing something in a really big way. Me. And especially after the after the losses, he comes on and he has this almost glow about him of like, no, that's yes, we lost, but we've got the game tomorrow. And we feel really good about it. And he just doesn't seem like he takes a hit. You hit him on the chin, he might stagger backwards, but his next step is forward. Yeah. And there you saw him after a win yeah. saying, you know, there, there is no Wednesday. There is only tomorrow. That's that's the only way to live. And I mean, gosh. we've been talking about how they can't they can't worry about the games going forward. They can only worry about this game that they have to play. If Merrill Kelly is the Sith, I mean, Geraldo's got to be Palpatine. What was his Palpatine? Yeah, we'll talk, we'll teach you Star Wars <laughs> before he you go back. General, to what was his role? He was, was an his emperor. Ranking? He was emperor. An emperor. Yeah, Emperor gotta, Perdomo and Sid Kelly. Like, uh, let's go. I don't like your lack of knowledge about Star Wars. That bothers I know me. Enough. But I know. Yeah, I don't really feel like you do. But Cantina here's Kevin scene. Dinkle. I, mean, I know some things. General oh. Palpatine. You absolutely do not know enough. Palpatine. Do you think if you don't look like you should know enough? His name is literally the Emperor. Like, what the fuck is happening here? I if I don't. Say Palpatine or Palpatine, then I clearly Palpatine. don't know. I know enough to at least get the reference out. Oh my God. How is Patrick not a Star Wars guy? He just looks like a Star Wars guy. He doesn't guy. smoke weed. He doesn't know Star Wars. You're His such entire a phony, facade dude. is like, I saw, you're a he phony. He's today. a fraud. He's I an saw fraud. a bird today that just had me singing. I'm a birder. I'm a good boy. I'm wholesome. Yeah, he is very wholesome. I'm glad to have you here. You balanced me out for sure. Uh, I tried to check yeah, what this happened? beer. No, things happened. It's fine. I almost There's lost my bubble. focus. I lost my focus because <laughs> I heard you say, bubble. I heard you say it out of my ear go, Ooh, that got me. <laughs> did you say it got it me? Did, it did get me. It that's, did get me. That's uh, me. But Kevin Gingle, of course, also gets me, and I get him. And he said that the job isn't done yet, uh, and I'm ready to be fired up even more by this team. Let's go. Um, the job's not done yet. Um, you know, I know we're excited and everything, but uh, it's game seven. I haven't been in this position before, and, um, you know, they're, they're a good team. So we're just going to go out and handle it and play our game. <laughs> It's got a strong Chris Jericho vibe yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. That's it. Oh man, Kevin Ginkle. The job isn't done yet. I mean, that's the thing is, nope. is you can't we we can't we can't be all be chugging beer bats and stuff tonight. Uh Derek, that, nine that innings. is for tomorrow. Nine innings away nine from innings. going to the World Series. Nine innings, and we are putting our faith <sighs> and our trust and our everything into Brandon Fott, a guy who we absolutely knew was going to be the future of this team, a guy who Brent Strom, I will once again discuss, called him while he was sent down to the AAAs, mm. uh, AAA, 
Right? I said that like there's more than one AAA. Uh, while he was sent down to AAA, he was actually on vacation um, during All-Star break at his parents' home in Kentucky and had a conversation where not only did he discuss with him some ideas to move him to the other side of the rubber, which improved him greatly, but he also said to him that they were going to need him in the postseason and they were going to need him to uh, you know, make some big starts for this team. And here, here we go. <laughs> you, you couldn't ask for a bigger start out of any starting pitcher for the Arizona Diamondbacks than asking Brandon Fott to start in game seven of this NLCS in a potential advancement game that will send the Diamondbacks to the World Series. It's it's wild. It's it's wild how it's going. And it's wild to think you got to feel pretty confident, too. That's the uh, that's the other thing. As, as Ty said, you got to have faith in thoughts. You got to have faith. And, and again, that maybe that's the deceiving thing to really get your hopes up. You go, hey, wait a minute. He already beat this Phillies team. So uh, yeah. he already beat Ranger Suarez. But still, that's a good thing. And I think, again, keeping everything in perspective, you know, Tori and Strom's going, look, just do what you did before, but maybe for four innings. Like, you don't even have yep. to go five and two thirds yep. because that is a big ass. That's, again, you, you as you ran it's the numbers ass. down, back to back starts of what he was able to do, it's it's almost never happened before. So it, it has it, literally never happened before. Yeah. There's never been a starting pitcher that has gone zero earned runs, zero walks in consecutive starts in the postseason before. Now, that is with a short leash that, mm -hmm. that Tori has kept him on. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there it's still history and it's still a wise idea on tory's part to do it with somebody that has as much experience as merrill kelly why wouldn't you do it with brandon fought you just need brandon fought to go out there and keep you in the game for 18 batters just like he did in game what game three right and so if he can do that if he can keep this score close and he can keep the phillies from building a big lead early on this team has a chance and honestly what we saw tonight was obviously the the the, the blueprint, right? It was the mm -hmm. most desirable outcome that you could ask for. Uh, however, you know, there, there's still a lot to be done because this Phillies team tonight went from being ultra aggressive in, in at the plate to mm -hmm. being a much more patient team. And that's why Merrill Kelly looked a bit shaky in that first inning and in that second inning. They were able to get some walks. They were able to put some guys on base. And it was based on the fact that you could tell they kind of evolved their game plan because, again, scouting reports come out just like Tori Lavola. We talked about it pregame about Tori Lavola talking about being ultra aggressive on mm -hmm. the base path and such tonight. He was. It wasn't a chess move. It wasn't like just talking and not backing it up. They were aggressive on the base path tonight, and it worked out for them in several instances. So, I mean, now it's kind of the Phillies' chance to try to counter and come back in Game 7. But so far, I mean... Brandon Fott, the, the beautiful part about him is there's still a very limited amount of information available on Brandon Fott. So having him start mm -hmm. in these games is kind of like the bullpen start where the Phillies don't even know who Tory is going to go with. I think we might be able to predict who Tory was going to use more than the Phillies are because we've been, you know, watching this team. But still, it's it's hard to formulate a game plan when you don't really have a lot of information on either the opposing pitcher or the bullpen start. And we know that Rob Thompson has confessed he hates bullpen starts. I wouldn't be surprised to see Tory maybe even be a little bit quicker with 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 the hook for Brandon Fott in, in game seven and kind of do like a hybrid where Brandon maybe goes out there for four innings and then turns to the bullpen after that. I, I don't really know what we'll see. It's it's I have a couple of things to say about that. Yeah, I, I was kind of gonna pose the question to you. Could they go with an opener? Because that that's that's ultimately uh, it worked. The first inning, Joe Mantiply going out there on uh, on Friday's win, and so you say just shut down Schwarber and Harper to start, and then have Fought come in and, and see if you can get four innings out of him. That would be an interesting strategy it because then because be. then it immediately like takes those two lefties out of the the conversation and I think um, it, and, and still also, allows you maybe two times uh, for Fought to face those guys yes, two times. Yes. And at that point, yeah, I kind of like that. I that, mean, that would be good. I, I think that's. That's it's aggressive. A, it's a little aggressive. A little, maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know. But what, but what, Matt Supply wasn't used tonight, so I mean, Matt right. Supply could be a great option for them to do that with. What, what I can't wait to find out when this is all said and done with win or loss or otherwise. Um, no, those are the only two results, Derek. Mm -hmm. uh, win or lose. But um, Tory saying, "Here was my game plan for this series," because maybe he thought the only way that the Diamondbacks were going to win was in like six or seven 
and with a certain strategy. And it might not necessarily have been, hey, we have to win three of the four between Kel- Kelly and Gallon, which yeah. we all thought had just ha- absolutely had to happen. It was the opposite. They've only won one of those starts. But part of that game plan of maybe not being as aggressive as they've been all season long, that strategy worked for 162. Uh, it even worked for a couple rounds of the postseason. But against JT Realmuto and uh, a pitching staff that does a pretty decent job of holding runners, specifically Zach uh, Wheeler, like maybe you maybe you can't do that. And, and being very patient at the plate too when there might have been opportunities to like jump on the opposing team. But you know what? You do that, now your pitcher is, is in the dugout for a much shorter period of time yeah. and then has to go back out there against this really, really great and, and threatening lineup. It will be interesting to see when it's all said and done if Tori will say, here was my game plan. It was a bit of a rope-a-dope. There's no way we were going to knock them out in four or five, maybe not even six. It was going to be this back and forth, and we just had to outlast them. We just had to make them take all of their best shots. And then by the time we got to the 10th, 11th, and 12th rounds, they were tired. They were fatigued, and that was when we attacked. Yeah. I think that very well could be the case because, look, here we are. We're in the 12th round, and it's going to go down to a decision, essentially. Who's going who's gonna to do it for the final nine innings? And that's what it comes down to. The first six games— Absolutely meaningless. It's a one game winner take all so winner incredible. goes to the World Series. It's so incredible. Yeah. My God. I mean, this Diamondbacks team, what are they doing? What is this team? I don't understand it, <laughs> but uh, we have Kevin Ginkle here with, with some more because I can't get enough Kevin Ginkle. Uh, and he is talking about the bullpen success. And I mean, we know we've, we're, we know we've been witnesses. We're, we're fans, but here he has, here he is on, on, how they've been so successful it's just hard work hard work and um you know everybody's been doing their job and picking each other up and um you know it's, it's, it's i feel like we're just kind of rolling on all cylinders as of late but um you know tomorrow's a new day and um you know they're going to come out ready to go and um you know they got the home field crowd advantage but we'll, we'll be ready uh, can we take a look at the updated brackets, please? Because that just gets me fired up. Let's look at this. Holy shit. Three, and the Rangers are up three. four to one, I believe, right now on the Houston Astros. So it looks like we might see once again the road team in that ALCS series advance. Maybe. What the hell is going on with that one? At least, I mean, some crazy things are happening here with the D backs and the Phillies, but at least we were able to hold court a bit, two games each. Now we've each won one in each other's homes, and now there is one decisive game left, like you said, which is just incredible. But uh, we will see who we end up uh, having make it first because there will be a decisive Game 7 tonight, and uh, we will know if the Rangers or the Astros advance to that World Series. But now we know our story is not over. No. The journey is not over. Those two teams are evenly matched, right? They both won 90 games this season. Phillies won 90 Diamondbacks 186. Um, so really, I mean, that's not that lopsided, but I mean, when you look at what the Phillies were have been able to do yeah. this postseason, I think that there's a lot of there's much of the reason of why, you know, people really weren't given the Diamondbacks a chance. Phillies were six and zero this postseason at Citizens Bank Park with a plus thirty one, plus thirty one run differential, thirty nine to eight at home at Citizens Bank Park, out homering opponents seventeen to two this postseason. Uh they uh what they were they were shut out. Two nothing it's, today. Would that be right? Yeah, they two were. home runs for the Diamondbacks. None for the Phillies. None for you. No soup for you. Well, <laughs> uh, shout out to Joe. He said, "Fought is unfazed. Dude looks chill." That is the that is the that is the tale. That is the legend of Brandon Fought. When people talk about him, they talk. Uh, they speak a lot about how cool Brandon Fought is. He is as cool as the other side of the pillow. And this man continues to not show the nerves of a rookie pitcher that just debuted in major league baseball this season. So uh, hopefully he can continue to do big things in the postseason for this team because they absolutely need him to step up big. We need big game. Brandon in game seven, Clinton Barker or Baker. Sorry. Clinton Baker says Tori seems like a playoff mastermind. Yes. He really does. He really does. He really understands how to manage. And I think that the biggest thing about Tori is he manages in the postseason completely different than he does in the playoffs, which is I, the, an adjustment that you need to make or then he does in the regular season. Yeah. I should say, I think I said postseason and playoffs and 
That's I, definitely I think, I think that's I, definitely the second <laughs> beer, third beer batch showing for sure. I think I think we talked about this on the DNVR Rockies podcast earlier today as like, you know, who's been the most impressive or who's kind of uh, you know, uh outkicked their coverage, so to speak. And it's sure. like Tories maybe is in that conversation, which it's weird to say that about a manager, but you look at the moves that he's been able to make and and even ones that haven't worked out, you're like, Well, that was the move that most people would have made. It's just He's been outstanding and, you know, you don't always need your manager necessarily to be outstanding. I mean, I, I, I haven't watched it from the same lens, uh, no. the Phillies this postseason, but I don't know that you need to, to say, oh, Rob Thompson's doing a great job. Just write that lineup and let those guys hit home runs. That That's kind of easy, right? You know, some of the pitching, you know, choices can, can be key and critical, but Torrey has just been, he's been a mastermind. Look, uh, I, I'll make this metaphor. Do it. Sometimes in life when you're, you know, not tall and ruggedly handsome with a lot of muscles you need to figure out a way to uh you know get yours in if you will you need to figure out a way to find a footing and develop other strengths you develop a personality Mm. you develop some other things that happen right so like in a way this team doesn't have all of those things that you would be excited about to tout about you know they don't have the big name free agents they don't have even even Zach Gallen being our ace wasn't a guy that that, that has a lot of name name brand recognition. He right. does, he's not a lot. He's not a not a name. A lot of you know people outside of diehard major league baseball fans mm-hmm. know. And this team was able to during the regular season develop a personality, develop an ability to fight their way through uh, you know the ups and downs of a regular season in a division like the NL West and make their way. Uh, to this point right and so right. like I feel like a lot of that characteristic builds in Tori Lavallo because of the fact that he's managing this team and now he does have to be creative he's had to do things like deal with basically having a four-man starting pitching rotation in a five-man pitching starting rotation world right so um, you know a lot of that I think carries over to his ability to manage here and it's exciting to see I will say though let's pump our brakes a little bit because tomorrow night is going to be a very difficult win Uh, for this team it's gonna be a very difficult game and again i think if anything now the phillies are absolutely not taking us for granted they're not you know they're not doubting us the the phillies understand that this team is uh is 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 a team that if you sleep on them they can beat you and so of course i will continue to bet on the phillies like i did on the pregame show i threw my five dollars on it and again i've told you guys it's absolutely worth my five dollars to go uh on i think bronson lee my buddy from twitter he was in here somewhere talking about how uh, i'm not allowed to bet anymore on the phillies try to stop me bronson (laughs) i would love to see you stop me from doing so i will bet on all of your guys to hit home runs and i will bet on your team to win on the money line every single time and here's the thing if you know you can bring positive vibes and good juju to your team, then you should do that with the BetMGM Sportsbook app. You can also try to use it for the reason you probably should, and that's to make some money. Uh, but you can place your first bet uh, on the BetMGM Sportsbook uh, app through uh, their mobile application of at least $10. And if you do, use our code of PHNX. You'll get yourself some free money. You'll get $200 instantly in additional winnings, regardless of your wager's outcome. All you have to do is download that app wherever your phone is from, whether it's uh, an Apple phone or people shame you for having an Android. doesn't matter. Visit BetMGM.com even and sign up with our code of PHNX. Deposit at least $10 into your newly created account and use that $10 on a qualifying bet which is a bet at a standard odds price. And once you do, you will receive $200 in bonus bets instantly, regardless of your wager's outcome. You can use that to throw all of the bad vibes on the Phillies, every bit of your uh, bonus bets. I mean, there's probably better usage of it than that, but if you want this team to win, what are you doing? Use your bonus bets and bet again, bet on the Phillies. And then that way it'll bring bad things to the Phillies. So uh, whatever, I, that's what I do with my money. And Patrick, Patrick absolutely approves of me using my money that way. So, but you can strategic. sign up once again for Bed and Gym and use that bonus code of PHNX. I'm sorry, what were you saying? It's strategic. What are you doing? It's, it is strategic. It's a win-win situation. It's a win. Why you're the hedgehog? Win. It's why you I'm your Sonic bets. the Hedgehog. That's you hedge for sure. Your bets, you're the hedgehog. It's right. Uh, you can place your first Bet MGM Sportsbook wager through this mobile application of at least $10. Use our code of PHNX to sign up, and you will receive $200 instantly in additional winnings, regardless of your 
wagers outcome. Check out the show notes for full details. And now listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer. Gambling problem? Call 1-800- Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope Y 467-369 New York. Call 1-800-327-5050 Massachusetts. 21 plus to wager. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF Iowa. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help Michigan. 1-800-981-0023 Puerto Rico in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., New York, or Ontario. Ontario. Uh, well, also, check out our friends at FOCO. See, uh, you'll see our little wonderful uh, bobbleheads here on our set as soon as Jesse joins us here in the next segment. But if you want to decorate your office, your space, your home, do so with FOCO. They have little tiny works of art. We were talking about it on the DNVR show earlier today, but they're numbered and they are limited edition. Yes. And as much as you might end up going to like Goodwill, like I did, and seeing a Luis Gonzalez bobblehead that you waited entirely too long in line for uh, on a shelf one day for like a dollar. Uh, you won't have that happen with Foco bobbleheads no. because they are worth entirely too much money based on how unique yes. they are. And you're also not going to walk into your friend's house and also see that they have one. And it's, it's yeah, there's not 40000 given away for free. Yeah. yeah. Like it's 25 of them and they yes. cost like $70 and they're incredible. Look at yeah. some of these tiny little it's, works of it's art. It's the when quality. We so yeah. yeah, even if they were free, you'd go, these, this is quality. I'm going to hold oh, on. Oh, it. it's definitely quality. The, uh, the Cattell Marte flexing with the snake around his neck that looks like me right now with this snake around my neck. Pretty good. Quite possibly my favorite bobblehead I've ever seen in my whole entire life. But of course, you can check out their entire collection at foco.com. You can also check out all of their other things that they have, including Aloha shirts, straw hats, polos, bags, everything you need for a baseball game. So check out Foco uh, because they always have our back for Arizona sports and they have yours too. Get the best gear around by visiting foco.com and using code PHNX for all non pre sale items. If you use our code, you will get that uh, 10% off for those items. So make sure you use promo code PHNX for 10% off. Well, like I said, like I promised, we're going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the Foco bobbleheads. More importantly, you're going to see the one and only Jesse Friedman joining us from Citizens Bank Park after, again, one of the biggest victories in Arizona Diamondbacks history. Jesse, what a night for the Snakes and what a night to advance uh, to play one more game against this Phillies team that has been pretty tough, yet the Diamondbacks continue to find a way to hang around. Yeah, man. I mean, what, what do you say, right? The Diamondbacks <laughs> did the thing. The Diamondbacks forced a game the seven. The Diamondbacks are one win away from the World Series, just as all of us expected coming into the playoffs. We if knew didn't, it. If you, didn't have, if you didn't know this was happening going in, you were on an island by yourself, right? All of us here, everyone knew fools. this was going to happen. You're a fool. You are all <laughs> fools that didn't know the Diamondbacks were going to make it this far. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because, you know, after after this game ended in the clubhouse, we were asking, you know, D-backs are one, one win away from the World Series. Of course, we have to ask the question to all of the players, like, all right, thinking back to February, you know, could you have seen this team in this spot? And you get a, a wide variety of answers. Christian Walker, you know, sort of played it cool and was like, yeah, of course, you know, uh, talked about, you know, some things that were said at that point and, and how the Diamondbacks anticipated that they could be a lot better of a team than a lot of people thought. And, you know, obviously there's, there's truth to that. Um, but there were other guys who said, no, I, I think Corbin Carroll uh, pr pretty, uh, was, was pretty blunt and just said, no, yeah. I, I didn't see this coming. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's exactly yeah, sorry, what, go ahead. Yeah, it's exactly what you would expect. I mean, some of them are trying to be honest because this is not what you would expect. I don't even think that, if you talk to Mike Hazen, that Mike Hazen could honestly say, Fair. yes, this is what I expected. Like they knew they were yeah. building towards this and I'm sure they felt like this was their future and that that's the reason why they're locking Corbin Carroll into a long-term deal and doing all of the things they're doing. But it's hard to believe that this team, you know, really expected to reach, you know, this point this season so soon with so many of their young guys, in their you know their first their rookie season and really just you know not not making any major moves that you would think that would allow this team to contend for this world series spot potentially like one game away yeah i mean look the diamondbacks have they have some flaws on their roster i don't think there's any there's any question about that right i mean they they don't have uh, a fourth starter after those top three guys that you know their third base situation is far from ideal <laughs> right now 
uh, you know, the bullpen outside of Paul Seawald and Kevin Ginkle. There's not a whole lot of track record there uh, with, with some of those guys, with a lot of those guys. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, this is sort of the team that the Diamondbacks are. They're kind of the team where the moment you're ready to count them out, they go and do what they did tonight here at Citizens Bank Park. Diamondbacks become the first team this postseason to win a game in this ballpark. Uh, the Phillies coming into today were 6-0 and in this postseason at Citizens Bank Park, having outscored their opponents 39-9. to The Phillies have absolutely decimated their opponents, the Marlins, the Braves, and in those first two games, the Diamondbacks, uh, so far this year in, in this ballpark here in October. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, you know, somehow the Diamondbacks come in with a lot of people who counted them out, which has sort of been a trend throughout this entire postseason, right? Nobody thought the Diamondbacks were going to beat uh, the Milwaukee Brewers. They didn't think the Diamondbacks were going to beat the Dodgers at all whatsoever. And they certainly didn't think the Diamondbacks stood much of a chance in this series against the Philadelphia Phillies. And yet here we are talking about the Diamondbacks forcing a game seven, uh, which should be just absolute madness here tomorrow. Being there in the press box and, and traveling, obviously, to, to Philadelphia for this, there have been a lot of guys who have contributed to this. Marte, Moreno, Fott in particular, Kelly tonight, as well as the entire bullpen. So a couple guys, I think, have, have separated themselves, Marte and Moreno on the offensive side. But how much are people discussing about the work that Tori Lovello has done, not only in this series, but this postseason? Because he seems like... He's probably the biggest X factor for what was successful in the regular season to what's now been successful during the month of October. I mean, yeah, it's it's what we've talked about before in that, like, whatever Tori Lovello does, it just, like, kind of works. And it just yeah. kind of happens every single time, right? Um, and not necessarily completely. You know, there may be some some decisions this uh, this postseason that I'm sure he would like to have back. But yeah, I mean, you know, today it was it was very controversial. Uh, people really didn't like the fact that Tori Lovello took out Merrill Kelly after five innings. At least Including most people Merrill. didn't seem to like that. <laughs> and Merrill Kelly certainly did not like that decision. Yeah. I know that was uh, that interaction was played on national TV for all to see. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it was interesting hearing what what Merrill had to say, what Tori had to say about that after the game. Uh, Merrill just basically said he was shocked. Like it, he did not even think it was a question that he was going to go back out there for the sixth inning. Right, Torrey had already made uh, kind of a bold decision in some ways in letting Merrill go out there for the fifth and face the lineup a third time, face the yes. top of the lineup a third time through. Yeah. We saw that backfire in Merrill's last outing. He gave up a home run to Kyle Schwarber yeah. uh, when he went out there uh, to face the Phillies for for the third time. Uh, so yeah, I think Merrill, after getting the top three hitters in the Phillies lineup. Uh, that third time through and striking out two of them, he figured it was a no-brainer at 90 pitches that he was going to go back out there for the sixth inning. Uh, Torrey, yeah. you know, uh, obviously didn't feel that way. And I know you guys were talking earlier about how this postseason version of Torrey Lovello is very different uh, than what we saw in, in the regular season. And, and Merrill, after the game, said that, you know, uh, this wasn't me doubting the people who are coming behind me. This was me just having, you know, utter faith in myself to be able yeah. to go out there and continue yeah, dominating. And he really was pitching well. Like, that second inning for Merrill was, was pretty shaky. But it, it was about as good as, as we've seen him there in, in innings uh, four and five in particular. You can understand why he was not too happy to come out of this game. Yeah, because he was dealing, Jesse, and I completely get it because uh, Merrill gets into a groove, and we've seen this man at times uh, have his outings where he really is, th things are going well for him, cut short by stupid reasons. Cramps, you know, Torrey Lovello not wanting him to go past 90 pitches in this game. I get it, but it's also how Torrey has been managing so far in the successful games for this team, right? He's been keeping guys, including Brandon Fott, when Brandon Fott was absolutely dealing and, and Tori had to face that question of, am I an idiot for taking him out? Right. <laughs> uh, but it worked in that case and it worked tonight. And I think a big part of it is that like, I, I don't know if another manager can trust the four guys that Tori put out there tonight in the, out of the bullpen, as much as Tori trusts those guys, Thompson, Seawald, Ginkle, and, and, you know, uh, Saul Frank. Saul Frank, they've all been fantastic for this team. And they continue to just be incredibly reliable when Tory didn't have that at, you know, for, I guess, 75% of the season. He didn't have that reliable of a pen that he could, you know, go to and, and know that they could close the game down. With having that, it just feels like it makes his decision easier to pull that ball out of 
whoever's starting after they've seen the lineup two times in a row. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to take any anything away from Tory, you know, pushing all the right buttons, which I, you know, he clearly has managed very well in the postseason. I think, you know, Rob Thompson on the other side maybe made some questionable decisions, maybe shouldn't have allowed sure. Aaron Nola to face the Diamondbacks a third time through. That backfired. The D-backs scored a run uh, in that inning on a, on a Cattell Marte triple. But, you know, it, it, it very much does help Tory out that the bullpen has been good, right? I mean, there is a universe in which Ryan Thompson comes in and just sort of doesn't have it today, and, and Torrey suddenly looks very bad for, for the decision that he made, I don't, right? I don't, that's the darkest timeline. I don't want to live in that timeline. I yeah, but timeline. I mean, it's it's. I mean, if You're we're right, being though. honest, if you yeah. go if you go back and look at the pitches that Ryan Thompson threw, there was a lot of middle middle. Uh, Ryan Thompson made some <laughs> mistakes uh, yeah. in that in that sixth inning in the first part of that seventh inning as well. <laughs> that he I think he got away with. He pitched to contact, Jesse. <laughs> he pitched, yeah, maybe not in the <laughs> ideal sense of pitching to contact, but yeah, I mean, you know, he obviously has a funky arm angle, and that's sort of part of what makes him effective. Is yeah. you know, maybe he can get maybe he can get away with a few more things than. Uh, than you know, other other pitchers with with more typical deliveries would. But yeah, Especially I mean, this. the bullpen has made Tory look very good in a lot of situations because they continue to pitch like they did tonight. Yeah, especially after like we were talking about earlier, you, you're watching, you're you know, seeing Merrill Kelly all night, and then you get this in between pitcher that really just kind of messes up the your your approach and your mm -hmm. kind of. You you looking at the that the pitcher because he comes with this completely different arm angle, and and then you get back to more traditional arm angles with the rest of the the bullpen. But send, sending Ryan Thompson out there after you've been you know adjusting to Merrill Kelly all night and trying to share information in the dugout is is kind of a complete different experience. And as long as Ryan Thompson is effective, where he can like hit the strike zone and kind of not like not be wild, which he does. He's not really that. He's just a guy that kind of pitches and and gets outs and sometimes you can't even explain his success other than he's just like the he's that he's that relief pitcher that you don't even notice he went in there you know he yeah. just goes in there and the seventh <laughs> inning happened and then it and it's over and you're like what happened i don't know uh you know he went one up, three up three down like that's what that's what he seems to do but there's just something about ryan thompson even when he's off like like you said like he was tonight he's still not giving up that huge hit and he's still not putting the diamondbacks in a position to, you know, uh, not succeed. He's just been, he's just been terrific. Yeah. For this team. Yeah. Yeah. One, one thing I would add to it, Tori made a, uh, an interesting decision by leaving Thompson out there. Uh, Thompson yeah. got a few outs, right. Pitched through yeah. that sixth inning. And then you kind of figured that Andrew Saul Frank, who'd been warm up multiple times during the game, was going to come in and face Brandon Marsh. The Diamondbacks have basically, I don't know if they've ever let Brandon Marsh uh, face a right-handed pitcher in, in the later innings of a game when, when the Diamondbacks had their relievers in. It's just, I mean, Brandon Marsh is sort of as, uh, you know, as platoony of a player as, as they get, right? He has very yeah. heavy left-right splits, smokes righties generally, not so much against lefties. But Torrey decided to, to stick with Ryan Thompson. I think it was the first pitch of the inning Brandon Marsh smokes a ball into the right center field gap that Alec Thomas made a remarkable play, cutting it off and holding Brandon Marsh to a single. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that might have wound up that might have wound up saving saving a run in that inning. Um, I believe the uh, the Phillies came back and had another base hit in the inning that theoretically could have scored that run. If you um, second. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, and Gabby Moreno also, that was the same inning where Gabby Moreno I think it was Kyle Schwarber uh, grounded into the fielder's choice, and then Gabby Moreno, uh, you know, pinned Schwarber at second base as Schwarber was trying to advance on on a wild pitch. So yeah, the Diamondbacks did a lot of little things, um, uh, you know, in this game in in order to in order to make you know pitchers like Ryan Thompson look as good as they did. As you say, yeah, Saul Frank was warming in that in the fourth inning, where you go, oh man, Kelly, it, it's not going to be his night, but. Kelly ended up having a one, two, three inning. And then, yeah, I think, I think with, with Kelly maybe being a little upset was because he probably felt like he was getting stronger, which you can feel it, but the numbers suggest something completely different. Third time through the order, we already kind of went through that earlier in the show. Yeah. But he struck out Schwarber and he struck out Harper that third time through. And it's like, see, I got it. And it's like, yes, you did. And and those are the, the toughest at bats that you were going to get. And you, you figured out how it's going to work, but somebody of much lesser abilities than Schwarber and Harper 
third time through the order can do that damage against yeah. you. And that's yeah. really the last thing that you want. Just saw a comment in there about Castellanos uh, that we have in our, our chat on PHNX Sports about Castellanos being really cold uh, from El Colonel. Um, yeah. He has been. And, and Baum has kind of been a little quiet. I, I think he had a, a single today against Ginkle. And uh, there's other guys at the bottom of the lineup that you go, man, they could you know, very well get hot. And you, you're going to be regretful of that doesn't happen because Kelly does not get any more than those first three guys third time through the order after five innings. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, it's really easy to look at a pitcher who's dominating the way that Merrill Kelly was and be like, you know, well, surely that will continue into the next inning, right? But that's not necessarily always the way it works. A lot of times, you know, even even the most dominant pitchers in this game, the third time through, there's there's generally they're generally not quite as good the third time through, and that that switch can flip awfully quickly, right? One moment a pitcher can be dominating, and you know, two batters later they've they've given up a double and a home run or something, and then you're you're suddenly kind of wishing that you hadn't kept them in the game. So you can understand why the Diamondbacks made this move. I know some people might be. Uh, you know, angry at whatever computers uh, led them to, to make this decision, um, which I, I certainly understand that. Um, but yeah, you know, it, once again, it was a decision by Tori Lovello that, that absolutely worked out. Robo Lovello is, are you suggesting that maybe Tori's a cyborg or something? What, what's, what are you saying? <laughs> I don't know. You suggesting? I'm saying that he, he listens to whatever, yeah, whatever robot, whatever, you know, because whatever is running the Diamondbacks the analytics department. Yeah. <laughs> It's Dan Heron. Uh, Bill, <laughs> there you by go. the way, uh, in our chat says, Oi, and I don't know if that is an English Oi, but Jesse, we were the number seven baseball podcast in the UK. So I just nice. want to give a big what's up, uh, uh, Oi, bruv, to yeah. you, uh, Bill. Uh, is that, you want to give me a little? Yeah, well, cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Oh, good, on yeah, like yeah. good on you. Good on yeah, you, All right. Uh, I guess the big question now is, here we go, game seven. Ooh. The Arizona Diamondbacks will have Brandon Fott on the mound. Could you imagine this for young Brandon Fott? And what are your thoughts on his, his uh, on Fott being just cooler than the other side of the pillow so far in these big playoff games? I mean, it's it's hard to you know look back on what he did in Game Three and and not feel like the Diamondbacks are in a, at least a decent position here. Uh, I mean, that was the best that Brandon Fott has has ever pitched, uh, ever. probably in his life. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean. It, I mean, it was a huge stage, right? The biggest stage that he's ever pitched on in his career. And this is going to be an even bigger stage. Big old marbles uh, you know, from that guy. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, you know, the Phillies have seen him before. So yeah. I, I guess there is maybe uh, a little bit more of a challenge here, just given that, you know, Fod is a, a pretty young pitcher, someone that teams don't have, you know, as much video on, maybe don't have quite as complete an idea of, you know, what his tendencies are compared to some of the other pitchers that, you know, there's years and years of footage and, you know, uh, scouting reports are maybe a little bit more developed. But, yeah, I mean, Brandon Fott was outstanding in that game three. The Diamondbacks won at home. Ranger Suarez, of course, is uh, also a, uh, a pretty darn good pitcher, uh, at least here in the postseason. He's put up just ridiculous numbers and yes. was obviously really, really good in that game three as well. So, I mean, it should be a, it should be a fun game, right? I mean, Tori talked before. Uh, about how game sevens are crazy, game sevens are a crapshoot, and anything can happen in a game seven. And uh, we'll see how it all how it all unfolds tomorrow. Well, we are keeping you there. So go get yourself another cheesesteak, hoagie, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> go to Wawa, fill up, uh, and make sure you're ready for tomorrow, Jesse Friedman, because we are going to a game seven. And then if they win, uh, we're sending you on a bus to Texas, somewhere in Texas. I don't know where, but you're riding on a bus to Texas. So uh, I just needed to say that so maybe we get some more super chat funds. But I appreciate you, uh, and I will see you tomorrow. I'm actually, I'm actually walking. Uh, we He's can't walking, afford the bus yeah, ticket. Yeah. You know, Greyhounds walking, and, because of inflation, Greyhounds yeah, have really gotten more expensive. Again, so you can, you, you can help us out tomorrow. That'd be great. Sorry, sorry, you won't be there for Game Seven because you need to get going. To Texas, <laughs> World but. Series or bust is going to be on his cardboard. My sign. God, He's yes, be thumbing it the <laughs> yeah. whole way. Snakes alive, Jesse. We appreciate you, and we will see you tomorrow. <laughs> All right, sounds good. See Can you we guys. get? Wait, 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 wait. Get Jesse back in here. Can we get a ski from you? Ski. There you Thank go. you. <laughs> we did ski, it. Ski Jesse. to you, Jesse. Let's go. Ma Holy Michaela shit! Says, All uh, time yeah. ski. All time ski. Tomorrow, well, man, we're going to be celebrating it because it's. Fought Tuesday.
That's look. That's you from think the you're chat. so cute that's for that? Like, as chat. if I haven't used that before. You think I haven't made a meme of Brandon Fott in a in a in a New Orleans float going down the street? I will absolutely be posting that meme if he can pull it off tomorrow. And of course, we will be here tomorrow. So will you. So come back. Pre-game show, thirty minutes before the game, or thirty-seven minutes before the game, because that's how we kind of do things around here. Uh, and then we will be back here post-game, ten minutes after. Game seven of the NLCS. What? That doesn't make any sense. Travis, we appreciate your super chat. Travis says, let's go in tomorrow and unplug Decibel City. That could have been our goddamn (laughs) sign-off right there. Fire me up, Travis. Let's go. Uh, Speaking of heroes, and the Diamondbacks definitely are heroes, make sure to check out our friends at Hero Bread. Hero makes sliced bread, buns, and tortillas that are available on Hero.co and Amazon, and they are incredible. What makes them better than any other competitor that that you've used before uh it's because they have everything you need what whatever it is that you are looking for for your dietary needs hero bread makes a version of their bread you may not be counting carbs but you may be looking to get more fiber you may need more protein in your diet it doesn't matter uh if if of course you are looking for a replacement of that standard bread that we know at times no matter how delicious it can be is so bad for us. So check bad. out Hero Bread because they offer high fiber and ultra low net carbs, zero grams of sugar per slice, and all sorts of other wonderfully nutritious things. And they also have wonderful texture and softness to them. Your brain will be completely fooled. And again, you you don't like we just think of bread as being a certain way. And of course, the big problems with the healthier breads is they don't fall into that. They're denser. They might not taste the same. And Hero Bread has you covered, including with those uh, tortillas, which I'm very, very, very picky about. But they have fewer calories than the leading national brand. And, of course, right now, Hero Bread is offer, offering our listeners 10% off their first order. Just go to Hero.co and use code PHNX to save on Hero Bread today. That's H-E-R-O dot C-O to save 10% today. And, of course, get yourself some Shady Rays because the future of the Arizona Diamondbacks is is so bright that you can't even stare at it. So bright. It will leave a ring in your eyesight permanently. It'll permanently damage your eyesight well, think by about, staring think at the about, Diamondbacks' future. And think about like how painful it is and how much how damaging it can be to be looking into the sun and it's so far away. Well, the Diamondbacks' future is tomorrow. I mean, that's very close that they could be doing it. So get yourself some Shady Rays right get now. Get yourself. It's an independent sunglass company with a world-class product. And, of course, they also also offer the most insane protection plan in all of eyewear. If you lose or break your Shady Rays, even on day one, they will send you a brand-new pair. They brand told new. us no questions asked. Mm-hmm. Nothing at all other than uh, they'll just have you, you know, just, just request your your new sunglasses and that's it no shame heaped upon you no no glares no, no shade thrown your way yeah no no like ways. passive aggressive comments made your way by some customer service rep through an email you're just going to get new sunglasses sent your way you can shop their entire collection at their location at Carolyn Commons you can also shop their location uh their their website online and of course, if you don't love your Shady Rays, which we know sometimes you buy things online, they don't work out for you. You can either exchange them for a new pair or you can get a brand new pair uh, or you can get your money back. Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want. Within 30 days, you'll get your money back. You'll get a brand new pair. Shady Rays has your back long after you shop. And exclusively for our listeners, they are giving you their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code PHNX for 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250 thousand people and of course before we get out of here one place i'm stopping on the way home to celebrate is circle k oh do you want to hit them with the circle k facts before we go <sighs> look there another study i mean there's been a lot of studies there's been a lot of scientific stores. research done into convenience stores about who's the best convenience store nationwide and apparently circle k tops the list and, and in fact they've actually broken it down to specific locations mm-hmm, too mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, circle mm-hmm, k mm-hmm. occupies the top 18 locations in the united states and they're all in the phoenix area the just just straight up singular best convenience stores 18 of them 
better than the other locations anywhere in the country of other other companies even. Have I, They're right here in Phoenix. Have I told you I stop at the 7th Street and Roosevelt location and just do a little dance after Diamondbacks wins? That one's number six. It's kind of wild. Nation. Yeah, they actually, they've learned to know me. They're like, hey, it's the guy from the gas pump. He's doing the thing again. The Diamondbacks <laughs> must have won. So make sure to stop by Circle K because, of course, my soul is trapped in one of those gas pumps. Uh, and, of course, <laughs> you can save 25 cents on that exact gas that my soul is trapped in uh, by signing up for the Inner Circle membership program. It is absolutely free. All you got to do is download a member, uh, download the app, the Circle K app today. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. But if you do, you will save 25 cents per gallon on your first five Phillips. You will also get buy five, get six free on a selection of Circle K products, including pizza, coffee, and ice cold fountain drinks. They'll also send you all sorts of wonderful uh, discounts through the app for you to use. So make sure not to sleep on the free candy, the free chips, everything. We love you guys so much, and we will love you even more if you show back up tomorrow because we're doing this thing again. It's not over. got to. We're not going anywhere. We've got to, mister. We're not going anywhere! This team is a fucking wagon, and this wagon rolls on. We will be back here for our pregame and postgame shows tomorrow. In the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter. I am at cap underscore caveman with a K. This maniac next to me is Patty Plantain. He is at Patrick D. Lyons. You can follow him on Twitter. Uh, he is from DNVR, but we're probably keeping him. He keeps making flights to go back to Colorado, and we make him cancel them. It's crazy. It's anyway, wild. Hey, we- I, I can't wait to do, the, do at least one more pregame with you tomorrow. The Diamondbacks have already crashed the postseason. Mm-hmm. They might as well just break it. Let's do it. Let's break the goddamn thing. Let's Don't break let it. us get fucking four. Don't let us get four. God help you if you let us into the World Series. That man is Damon. He is the people's producer. You can follow him at Damon Dog. We are Damon's dogs. Roof, woof, roof. Woof. He is at D-A-W-G, of course, there on Twitter. Our show is at PHNX underscore D-backs. Uh, but all roads do lead to at PHNX underscore sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We thank you wonderful, beautiful people for your time tonight, and we look forward so much to seeing you back here tomorrow. In the meantime, we thank you again. We appreciate you. And remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it is so much more fun when you force a fucking game five against the Philadelphia Phillies. Let's go! Y'all silly like the mayor. 